So uh, one thing about eating a taco is it's kind of hard to eat a taco in front of a, uh, another man such as yourself. But uh, when it's so good, you, you're going to do what you got to do, uh, especially when you're hungry. So I'm eating a taco of uh, chicharron egg a la mexicana uh, made by one of my cousins here at, at my uncle's store. So cheers. That's good. I like it because it has it's like everything separate. It's different, right? But when you put it together, it just makes something that uh, is unique and, and something that you wouldn't think of what it is. You have chicharron, right? Skin from a pig that that was fried fresh this morning. You throw in some eggs and then you throw in some, you know, peppers, uh, tomato and onion and a flour tortilla. It's, it's home, man. It, that's what it is. It's home. I'm a father, I'm a, a, a son, I'm a husband, I'm a calavera, I'm a lawyer, I'm the DA. I mean, I'm many things. The biggest and proudest thing I am is I'm Mark Gonzalez from Al Dulce. So we are at uh, Dos Cardinales, which is owned by my uncle Hippie and my uncle Art here in Al Dulce, Texas, where I'm from. Uh, we are here because this place is home. And every time someone wants to talk to me or, or, or find out who I am, I bring them to this spot because it encompasses everything I am in one place. The reason I wanted to become a lawyer was because I was angry. We do a lot of things either out of love or sometimes even out of hate. And for me, being a lawyer was be out of almost hate. Uh, I got a DWI when I was 19 in Kingsville. You know, I got out of jail, I called my mom and dad and they picked me up. And you know, 60 days later we get a letter in the mail and I have no idea what to do. I didn't know any lawyers, I didn't know any judges, I didn't know any college graduates to be honest with you. And my mom said, mijo, go to court, plead guilty, they'll be nice to you. That's not what happens. I pled guilty, I got treated fairly, but it was what people get treated without lawyers uh, who take their mom. And there was a Navy pilot there next to me White dude, white lawyer, white judge, same thing that I did, and his case got dismissed. And for me, it was like a light went on. I'm like, you know what, that's not cool. I'm gonna try to be a lawyer so that way my friends can take me instead of taking their moms. And so the rest is taco history. <laughs> So one of the most challenging and difficult things of being a lawyer or even an elected official uh, is misconceptions, perceptions, uh, stereotypes, seeing somebody who doesn't look like them, seeing somebody who may be covered in uh, body art, as my mother-in-law likes to call it, uh, tattoos. They think you're not qualified for the job, but when in reality, uh, you're probably the most qualified person in the room uh, because you have a, a better understanding of uh, all the parties involved. So as I sit here in this chair and I'm driving from my mother-in-law's house or when I'm driving to the courthouse in Corpus, it, you know, I still say, dude, you're the DA. Like, it's still unreal sometimes. And you know, the work that we have to do, which is criminal justice reform, man, uh, trying to either end mass incarceration uh, or end, you know, the disparity between people of color, you know, in jail who can't afford to get out is, is very important. It's even much so more important than my own personal feelings. You know, maybe sometimes, you know, is it worth it? Yes, it is every time when we can help one person out who takes their mom to court instead of taking an, a, a lawyer. You know, so I'm very honored to, to sit here, even though uh, I probably shouldn't, but I am and I'm gonna do the best that I can with every second that I get to. You know what, I'm very proud of the work we've done in the, the, the two short years that I've been in office. I wanna say next month, we'll be doing a site and release program. And so that program is for uh, seven crimes allowed by the Texas legislator, which will allow officers not to arrest you. So all those people that were going to jail, typically of color, typically who can't afford to bond out, won't be going to jail anymore. Uh, and so what does that do? That saves the taxpayers money because we're not housing them. $81 a day, right? Uh, and those individuals don't really need to be in jail. You know, law enforcement's on board. You would think that they wanna put everybody in jail, but that's not the case because they've been supportive of this policy. You know, we're going live next month. We'll be the first in Texas. That's a big deal. For people who study criminal justice and criminal justice reform, we'll be the first in Texas to be accomplishing that. And I'm super proud of that, I'm super proud of my team and even law enforcement for being part of it because they wanna keep the community safe. 
and arresting low level type of offenses does not keep our community safe. They need to be out on the streets um, answering the bigger calls. So I'm a very uh, honored member to be a part of a, a family club, you know, uh, the Calaveras. I've, I've been a, a member for quite some time. I uh, started out as, as the club lawyer. Before I knew it, I knew that as, as representing individuals in the club, I needed to be part of the club. Uh, my Uncle Hippie was uh, the one that uh, kind of got me involved. Uh, you know, he's been a very big influence on my life. Um, he's taught me and told me words that, uh, you know, I live by to this day. They're very true. Uh, you know, he always told me, never forget where you're from. And that's why I'm here in, in my hometown. He said, never turn your back on your family. And he always said, keep moving forward. Tacos to me represent uh, home. My dad worked nights and every time we'd wake up to go to school, he'd be, you know, going to bed. But we woke up to a, a, a bag with grease at the bottom and, you know, it was bean and cheese. There was one, of, one or two of bean and cheese, one or two of bean and bacon, and another one, uh, one or two of carne guisada. And for whatever reason, man, uh, you know, they always tasted better, you know, an hour or two or three later than, than fresh when he got there. And so every time I, I think of, of taco, I think of my dad. So one misconception about tacos is that everyone can make them. I think to have an authentic taco, it needs to be made by either one of your tias, your abuelas, or somebody who actually knows what it means to make a tortilla, to uh, uh, make it with love so that way it could be authentic. You know, that, that was something that nourished us and fed our bellies uh, and warmed our hearts and souls. I mean, you can't fake the funk on that kind of stuff. It has to be authentic. You know, more people need to break bread together. More people need to eat together because the bonds you create when you go to a barbecue or you eat tacos together is unbreakable. Uh, and that transcends all uh, economic classes, racial classes, genders, because good food's good food, man. And no matter if, you, it, it's, it's amazing that people who uh, feel a certain way, you know, but they love Mexican food. They love tacos, they love barbacoa, they love fajitas, they love tequila. But yeah, you're trying to build walls, you know? That's not what it's really about. <laughs>